Should nothing of our efforts stand, no legacy survive unless the Lord does raise the house in vain, its builders strive. To you who boast tomorrow's gain, tell me what is your life? A mist that vanishes at dawn, all glory be to Christ. Welcome to the Open Bible Podcast. I'm Pastor Jeremy, and along with Ethan Jones, we've been going through the book of Proverbs one chapter at a time. And we're nearing the end of this daily project together. And as we do, we'd like to give you an opportunity uh, to share what it's been like for you. Maybe how you've been encouraged or challenged over the past month. And you can let us know by replying in a comment on YouTube or writing us a quick email, uh, which is in the description of the video. Again, it's our prayer that we've renewed our subscription to God's wisdom during this month, and that we've done so in in trusting him by aligning our lives to his character and order. Our proverb today is chapter 29. Before we read, let me introduce a, a, a major theme that we'll come across, and that is the theme of pride and humility. And consider that as you listen. He who is often reproved, yet stiffens his neck, will suddenly be broken beyond healing. When the righteous increase, the people rejoice, but when the wicked rule, the people groan. He who loves wisdom makes his father glad, but a companion of prostitutes squanders his wealth. By justice, a king builds up the land, but he who exacts gifts tears it down. A man who flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet. An evil man is ensnared in his transgression, but a righteous man sings and rejoices. A righteous man knows the rights of the poor. A wicked man does not understand such knowledge. Scoffers set a city aflame, but the wise turn away wrath. If a wise man has an argument with a fool, the fool only rages and laughs, and there is no quiet. Bloodthirsty men hate the one who is blameless and seek the life of the upright. A fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. If a ruler listens to falsehood, all his officials will be wicked. The poor man and the oppressor meet together. The Lord gives light to the eyes of both. If a king faithfully judges the poor, his throne will be established forever. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. When the wicked increase, transgression increases, but the righteous will look upon their downfall. Discipline your son and he will give you rest. He will give delight to your heart. Where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. By mere words, a servant is not disciplined, for though he understands, he will not respond. Do you see a man who is hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Whoever pampers his servant from childhood will in the end find him his heir. A man of wrath stirs up strife, and one given to anger causes much transgression. One's pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly in spirit will obtain honor. The partner of a thief hates his own life. He hears the curse, but discloses nothing. The fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. Many seek the face of a ruler, but it is from the Lord that a man gets justice. An unjust man is an abomination to the righteous, but one whose way is straight is an abomination to the wicked." Over and over again, Proverbs has clearly presented two essential postures. The posture of one who is headstrong, who listens to nobody, the hard-hearted, my way or the highway, proud fool. This continued resistance against correction, against the appeals for wisdom, will eventually become the fool's eternal state. There will come a time when opportunity for repentance finally ends, when it runs out and and no hope of change is possible. This comes at death and this is final. Listen to the first verse of our chapter. He who is often reproved yet stiffens his neck 
will suddenly be broken beyond healing. We find that, you know, this reminds me of uh, Milton's famous quote in Paradise Lost. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. And this becomes even more explicit at the beginning of verse 23, where the author says, One's pride will bring him low. This is the irony of God's created order, that those who lift themselves up in pride will ultimately be brought low in disgrace. You cannot ignore this push against reality forever. But there is a second posture, also ironic to the human mind, and this is the second half of verse 23. It reads, One's pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly in spirit will obtain honor. Abundant life, as God designed it, is found in dependence on Him. So this essential posture is that of the lowly in spirit, the humble, the one who knows who God is and that he or she is not Him. So the humble will receive honor. What is the default posture of your heart? You know, the older I get, the more the Spirit works within me, the more pride I see the more I'm aware of my stiff neck and my hard heart. I trust this is not because I'm getting worse, but because I'm getting better. The Spirit is revealing just how pervasive my pride is, the extent of my sin. So how do we grow in humility? How do we put our pride to death? Well, let me read verses 25 and 26. The fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. Many seek the face of a ruler, but it is from the Lord that a man gets justice. We grow in humility by trusting in the Lord for our security. We grow in humility by trusting in the Lord for justice. We grow in humility by immersing, rehearsing, and and living out the gospel. That is what it means to trust, for us to trust in the Lord for our security. There is no security apart from receiving God's grace by trusting in his son, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of our sin and that he rose again to give us eternal life. That's how we grow in humility, by looking at who Jesus is as the son of God and his sacrificial love towards those in rebellion against him. We also grow in humility by trusting in the Lord for justice. This is another promise of the gospel that one day Christ will return and his kingdom will never end. He will judge evil and wickedness. He will make all things right. So as you look for security, as you look for justice, whose face do you turn to? Is it the face of a spouse, the face of a parent, the face of a a ruler or government? These aren't necessarily bad, but each of them will disappoint you. None of them can provide the security you long for. None of them can provide the justice you desire. Trust in anyone apart from the Lord, yourself included, is a trap. You will grow in humility the more you look at the heart of God in the gospel. I dare you to compare yourself to Christ, his grace is his sacrifice, his love, his obedience. When it comes to these, you don't stand a chance. Humble repentance and loving obedience are the only result of those gripped by the gospel. So by the Spirit, may our hearts and necks soften. May we acknowledge our sin in his grace and may we experience security and justice through him alone. Go in peace.